worry, I live with your folks. Don't worry, if it's a person who's been previously married, I'll take care of the children as though they are mine. These are big undertakings that you may not know how they may turn out. But they're saying it with a good heart. They say it with a brilliant heart. Don't worry. If you are living in a hut, I'll come and live with you. Subhanallah. Yes, it sounds romantic. It's really good. It sounds sweet. But two years down the line, please don't change your mind. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. So these type of statements we need to be careful of. And I'm addressing those who are not married as well as those who are. Because if you're not married and you say you're ready to compromise so much, are you really sure that 10 years down the line, you will still be ready to compromise that? Something extremely important. Why do marriages break? When we, number one, when you're not prepared to sacrifice for your spouse. Number one, when you're not prepared to stand up for your spouse. Number one, when you do not protect your spouse. Notice I said three things, all of them are number one. You notice? The reason is I can't tell you number two and three. These are all important matters. When you don't stand up to protect your spouse from the evil of your own mother, your marriage is not going to work. You might say my mother has rights. How can you say that she's evil? She's not evil. Shaitan is evil. Shaitan comes and makes her say things and I can explain to you why. You were not married. Your mother, your sister, perhaps someone else in your family had you all to themselves. So you spent money on them. You spent time with them and you took them on holiday. You went around with them. Now you need to start your life. You need someone who's going to be called a mother to other children who will belong to you. They also have rights. So when you get married, it is natural, natural, human nature. Shaitan comes and actually fuel that and make it worse, makes it worse. What happens? Now you cannot spend as much money on your sister or your mother as you did before because now you need to save. So before I had a paycheck and I used to just give it to my folks. Now I have a paycheck, my wife has to share, I have a living, I have a house, I have a car. So naturally, sometimes people will feel, hey, I've lost out. Up to that point, it's still natural. Beyond that, Shaitan comes in Tampa and says, listen, I hate my sister in law, meaning your wife. So your sister is saying, I hate my sister-in-law, not because she's a bad person, not because of anything. She's taken my brother away from me. I, I hate my daughter-in-law because she's taken my son away from me. My beloved mother, my beloved sister. Trust me, my wife has not taken you or me away from each other at all. I have responsibilities. You had the privilege and the honor of having a little bit more of me when I was single. Now I'm no longer single. I have a priority. People say, obey your parents. I say, not when you are married and they are wrong. Remember this. Don't think it's noble to obey your parents when they are glaring you in the face with something haram, something wrong. They are usurping the rights of your wife. They, are, they cannot be obeyed. There is now someone who is a mother to your children who you need to consider. Yes. We will side with what is right and who is right, whether it's your mother or your wife. Remember this. So I'm not saying that your parents should be disregarded. No, respect them at all times. You know, if you go back to the to the Quran and to the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu he never says that you blindly adopt and accept everything your parents say. Not once did he say that. Not even once. In fact, the Quran says, in another place, Ihsana. Allah has asked you to be good and kind to your parents. He did not say obedient. Remember why? Because obedience belongs to Allah. That's what it is. If your parents are right, I will adopt what they are saying because they are right. If they are wrong, I will kindly tell them, respectfully tell them that you are wrong. Allahu Akbar. So I owe them kindness. When you look at the hadith of your mother, who next, your mother, who next, your mother, songs have been made about it. You know that, right? That never speaks of obedience. Do you know this? We need to clarify this because many, many mothers are suffering from the wrath or the pain that is inflicted upon them by their mothers in law and vice versa. Vice versa, I'm going to get to that just now. What does this mean? I'm his mother. He should listen to me first. No, I am now a man. When I was not married, yes, indeed. When I'm married, I just need to remember my mother's also a human being. 
She can make mistakes. I love her. I will kiss her. I will honor her. It does not mean I need to give all my cash to her. She will not decide what to cook every day as though my wife is just a worker who's come here to work. This is happening in a lot of homes where the woman comes in. Yes, we are living together. My beloved mother-in-law, we love you. And I'm talking here about my own mother too. Beautiful woman, alhamdulillah. And I'm saying it in a beautiful way. We all love to live together. But you don't make the decisions in this home. No, not at all. If you're not a man, my beloved brother, who's now a husband, if you're not man enough to side with your spouse when your mother is wrong or when she's overstepping her rights, trust me, there will be frustration caused by you in the marriage and the marriage will break because today's girls are not like a long time ago, when a car is damaged, they can send it for panel beating. No longer. Now when the car is damaged, I want a new one. I want out. That's what it is. Today, for the smallest reason, they want out. You've had the first problem. I want out. That's another point that breaks marriages, where we have a sickness. Instead of helping each other when we are gone wrong, the husband doesn't want to hear, look, this is how my home is. Take it or leave it while I'm leaving it. Then the marriage breaks and what happens? We end in divorce for nothing. It could have been the best marriage. We can still work it. We can. But we are being stubborn. You, my beloved brother, stubborn. You, my dear sister, you are stubborn. And you know what? You're allowing people to have a say who are not supposed to be having a say. The worst is when you go to an alim or a counselor and he tells you, just make supper. That's it. My brother, my beloved Maulana, Sheikh, whatever you call yourself, stop saying to the people, no to him. I think you guys can stay on those pills, inshallah. You can just buy a bottle and every for lunch, pop in a pill. And well, when I say pop pills, please, I'm talking of the right thing. <laughs> so, you know, for lunch, you have a little tablet and for supper, you have a tablet. That's not what life is. You, someone, somewhere, somehow is going to have to cook. So you need to help each other sort that matter out. This, this person here, just because they can cook well, doesn't give you the license to invite who you want for tea and for supper and for the same. My daughter, you know, will cook. Even if you and her are on a good footing, on a good relationship, it will break it. She might be cursing you from inside to say, you know what, inconsiderate. Can't you see, I need my time. My... It's okay if it's once a month. You know, nowadays they say once a year. But anyway, no matter what, it's okay depending on how you are with these people. Sometimes we go on holiday. Yes, alhamdulillah. Who do we tag along? We tag along the entire dunya. So I go, my wife goes. Who else goes? Well, I'm talking of initially when you don't have children. My mother has to come. My dad has to come. My sisters, my brothers who are unmarried have to come. Sometimes my sister who's married with her husband has to come. That's not a holiday. To be honest with you, if you have a family who loves doing that and genuinely they all looking forward to it, you are fortunate. But sometimes people want their private moments. Hey, I want to go and be able to just be myself. No worry about cooking anything for, for one week. Please. I think you would owe that. Owe that maybe not from an Islamic perspective. As in holidays are not farah. But it's something that could actually help your marriage. When your spouse has made a mistake. Remember step number one is not to want out. No ways. That's the last step. Step number one is to seek medication, to solve the matter. The man made a mistake or the woman made a mistake. Try and solve the problem, help them. They may come out of that mistake better than they ever were. You may have a more blissful marriage when you help them through the problem. That's one of your duties as a spouse. Remember this. With us, one problem, hey, I saw a message. It just says, I love you. Who the hell is this like? I want out, I'm going. I don't want to talk to you, out. Then the man says, kala, kala, kala. you know how it's like a lawn mow. Allah Akbar. <laughs> People think they're mowing the lawn. That's not how you divorce a woman. That's actually worse than an animal's way of speaking. And then you find out, oh, that was just a message from her mother or her father. And then you hit your head. Too late. Stop, Allah. May Allah forgive us.